Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, it's like those awkward family photos. Okay. Um, every episode we have to make a thumbnail. Uh -huh. So pretend you're having fun here today. <laughs> I'll yeah. try. Yeah. Having so much fun. Now look afraid. Welcome to Millennial Falcon. I'm the Millennial Falcon. The show is the Millennial Falcon. We have Alex from Star Wars Explained. Hey. Hey. I made it. Tell me about yourself. I, I do a YouTube channel called Star Wars Explained. Oh, that's why. That's why you're Alex from Star Wars Explained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was what you named your house. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happens over there? Um, I just pick a topic from Star Wars and I talk about it and try to explain it as best oh, I can. Oh, okay, you explain it. Uh-huh. I that mean, I feel sense. like the name is pretty self-explanatory. Um, well, since it's my show, today instead I'm going to explain things to you to prove my superiority. Yes. It's like a dominance thing. I'm here to learn. Like, I know more Star Wars. Sure. So um, I have a hat full of things to explain. Okay. So I guess you prepared the topics for us. Yes. So they'll be a surprise to me. Um, I'm not worried because I know everything about Star Wars, so. Then they should be a walk in the park. Let's see. Why is Admiral Raddus blue? So Admiral Raddus, that's uh, the Akbar cousin from Rogue One. This is quite obvious, that why he's blue. Um, it's probably because uh, his wife left him not long ago, and uh, he's just he's going through some hard stuff right now. Also, kind of like a flamingo, he eats a lot of blue shrimp that they have on Mon Calamari. And uh, that the pigmentation turns his skin blue. That almost sounds like cannibalism. Mm -hmm. It's canon, is what you meant to say. <laughs> it sounds like it's canon. Uh, well, I, I mean, was emotionally, correct, right? emotionally, you might be correct. I could see him like being a little too involved with the rebellion, and maybe his wife did leave him. But mm -hmm. uh, the real answer is that he lives on like the north side of the planet. So Admiral Akbar mm -hmm. lives kind of closer to the tropical regions. Uh, and so those Mon Calamari are more orange and red, but Admiral Raddus and his aides, who are white, they live on like the polar caps, so they just have a... When, when did you make that up? Just now. Okay. After reading the Rogue One visual guide. That's um, so much more boring than my explanation. <laughs> well, oftentimes that's just life. Yep. All right, who's next? Who or what? Gorax. Um, Gorax is the name of the Rancor, the unnamed Rancor. His parents named him that when he was a little baby. Um, he got the name from his grandfather, and his favorite food is grapes. Mm. Um, I'm actually going to give you like a little bit of credit there because the Gorax uh -huh. is a, a large creature. <laughs> okay. So the Rancor's name is Patissa. The mm -hmm. Gorax is a large creature on Endor that actually hunted and fed mm -hmm. off of the Ewoks. They started in the Ewok made for TV movies. That's where they were oh, first created. Oh, I remember the Gorax. Yeah, it that it big ate their thing. parents. They found their clothes on it or something. They <laughs> thought it ate their parents. Yeah. All right, this is Baron Papanoida. Obviously, he's nobility. Good for him. Um, based on his name, I'm gonna imagine that he's a giant hairy spider and he's wearing like a jumpsuit um, with different armholes for all of his little legs. And uh, he sits on the Senate. He's um, pretty liberal in, in political leaning. And um, the most important thing he did in Star Wars canon was one time in the expanded universe, Luke uh, got thrown out an airlock and he thought he was gonna fly off into space and die, but he got caught in a giant spider web. And then Baron Papanoida crawled out and said, oh, hello, I saved you. And they've been best friends ever since. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Baron Papanoida is George Lucas's cameo character in Revenge of the Sith. I was close. <laughs> I mean, you did say Harry. Yeah. So he was from the planet Pantora. He is a part of the Senate. So mm -hmm. he's kind of like the, the leader of that planet. Um, wow, that's kind of an arrogant thing to write himself in as. Right. He actually, in Legends, was like the owner of a big media conglomerate, and he was a playwright that was well known. So, I mean, wow. he's basically Space George Lucas. And everybody loved his fourth, <laughs> fifth, and sixth works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what's next. Stu John. Now, this is an interesting character because he's both in Star Wars and in Game of Thrones. So he's that character that has um, 
the two beard things that he ties together, and he's inexplicably in Star Wars, and he's from a planet that happens to be exactly like Game of Thrones. Turns out uh, George R.R. Martin is a hack that stole all of it. <laughs> um, Stu John is a planet, not a person. I knew that. It is the home world of Obi-Wan Kenobi, mm -hmm. and it was actually named after Jon Stewart of The Daily Show. It's pretty dumb. Yep. I'm just pretty like sure George Stewart. Lucas just made it up on the fly at a Star Wars wow. celebration. And like he was being interviewed by Jon Stewart. Mm -hmm. And he was like, can you name a, a planet after me? And he was like, Stu, John. That's, That's as much the worst. thought that, that went into it. That kind of sums it. up George Lucas and, in his and, later years. And now it's canon. Yeah, okay. It's not important. It's fine. It's just the home world of one of the biggest characters. Yeah, who cares? It doesn't matter. Jedi Master Soon Bates. Um, related to Norman Bates? From Psycho? Yeah. I doubt it. No, from the expanded universe. <laughs> Norman Bates. Which story is he from? He was friends with Obi-Wan when they were boys on Stu John, uh -huh. and uh, they grew apart. Um, he also stabbed some ladies in a hotel. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of story about Jedi Master Bates. I mean, I basically just picked it for the name Master Bates. What do you mean? You, the name. What? No. The, no. What, what about the name? Nothing. Okay. All right, well, next up, we have Eternal Roar and the Ancient Ordu Aspectu. Mm hmm. Eternal Roar being a person. Being a person? Yes. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Eternal Roar and the Ordu Aspectu. Ordu Aspectu. Uh -huh. Don't interrupt me. Eternal Roar is, um, is like a, a classy lady. Um, and she attends the space opera all the time. And the uh, Ordu Aspectu is the instrument that she plays at the opera. She's not actually part of like the band. It's extremely annoying to everyone sitting around her. So you just hear like you're listening to the space bubble opera and you're just hearing like from her box and it's horrible. <laughs> uh, Roar and the Ordu Aspectu are from the new Dr. Afra comics. And oh, okay. Th the ones with Vader and stuff. Mm -hmm. The Vader ones or the new ones? The new ones. The new ones yeah. just about the Doctor. Right. So okay. the Order of Spectu was an ancient sect of the Jedi, and they were basically seeking eternal life. Mm -hmm. The main Jedi Order. It's not very Jedi of them. Uh, yeah, right. The yeah. main Jedi Order decided that wasn't something they wanted, so they put a stop to it. Ruhr was like the leader of the Order of Spectu, and he found a way to transfer his consciousness into a computer, uh, but the computer went bad and killed all of the Order of Spectu. It always does. Yeah. <laughs> the vampire creatures in Star Wars and the Queen of the Screaming Citadel. Wow. Um, there are a lot of vampires in Star Wars. Isn't that right? There's actually quite a few. There are so many everywhere. Um, you got your Twilight vampires, your Anne Rice vampires, you got your CW vampires, and then you got like your 30 Days of Night vampires that are just like zombies. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends on what planet you're on. If you're on Hoth, you're gonna get those zombie vampires. And um, if you're on the the Twi'lek homeworld of of <laughs> Ryloth, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you're gonna get um, the Twilight vampires. Okay. Yeah, because everyone knows it looks like Washington. And then uh, the CW vampires are on whatever planet is cheapest to film on. <laughs> it's probably um, Georgia planet. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites, uh, vampires in Star Wars is the Queen of the Screaming uh -huh. Citadel. Um, she's the Anne Rice type of vampire. And she uh, looks like Elvira, but she's seven feet tall because she's a little bit of an alien. And she has like a corset top and one of those big dramatic collars. And she always holds her arms like this. And she goes, welcome to my citadel. And then she just randomly screams as well. Right. So you'll go, oh, thank you. And then she goes, ah! Just like that. Just like Not that. Not any louder? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Are you familiar with her? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, she's kind of more based off of like the Bram Stoker Dracula thing. Does she live in a gothic castle? Pretty much. Yes. <laughs> this is my new OC of yeah. the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it basically it's my is. my self-insert character. <laughs> so she'll just have people come in, and if they bring her someone interesting, then she will do a favor for them. And she drinks the blood of the interesting person? I think she more absorbs like their life force. Like I, in I, The Mummy, the best film of the year. 
Probably. Yeah. I only watch Star Wars movies. Oh, so you've got to see The Mummy. It's just like a Star Wars movie. Are there lightsabers in it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Which part? All of it. There's a, just someone's holding a lightsaber the whole mm -hmm. time. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise is just... <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I believe you. Do you think Jedi blood is more delicious than normal blood because the midi chlorians? It sounds like it because she actually said something about how it's been a long time since she'd tasted a Jedi or a Force user. So. Did she say, I want Jedi blood? Basically. Blah. And then she <laughs> screamed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next one is probably the best one, and it's the last one. It's Urororo. This is Grand Admiral Thrawn's real name. Um, he changed his name because nobody could pronounce it right. Actually, Grand Admiral is part of his new legal name. Yeah, it, I'm Grand Admiral Thrawn. <laughs> okay, oh, I guess he works for the military. Yeah. He doesn't, totally unaffiliated. And then he just walks into a place and they're like, oh, it's Grand Admiral Thrawn, and all the stormtroopers just assume. So, er, 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 uh, the actual pronunciation, which might help you recognize the character, is more like, er, 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 er. It's a seal. Uh, it's a it's a Tuscan Raider from oh. from, okay. the, from a New Hope. It is the Tuscan Raider that attacks Luke Skywalker okay. on Tatooine. How does it pronounce? Er, 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 er. Okay. If you'll recall, he's actually just screaming oh. his name apparently as he attacks <laughs> Luke. That's what everyone does in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It's like the first scene where you see the iconic Darth Vader. He comes out and goes, Darth Vader! And just starts cutting everything <laughs> with lightsabers. You're like, I like this guy's style. Yeah. Well, you learned so much today. I sure did. Yeah. Well, now I'm not going to know what's real and what's wrong. And no, I'm, well, my just videos are just going to go down the toilet. Yeah, you're going to want to change some of your videos mm -hmm. based on this new knowledge I've yeah, given quite, you. Yeah, quite a few of them are wrong. Mm -hmm. Yours, of your videos. Yes. Yeah, mine were all spot on. Mm -hmm. Well, since you're here, I have a fun activity for us. Okay. I subscribe to an online subscription box called Loot Crate. It's oh. super legit. Alphonse, did my Loot Crate arrive? Alphonse! Oh, thank you. It's heavier than I thought that it would be. It is legit. Oh, look, it says Loot Crate. It's our sponsor. Here, grab a tape. Start ripping. <laughs> Uh, uh, you didn't help at all. Well, <laughs> okay. Ooh, there's so much in here. Okay. Okay. I see imperial binders. You know what's a great children's toy? Is a pair of handcuffs. But they're Star Wars themed. You're gonna put these on. Okay. Uh, you you put those on. Alright. You're under arrest. I'm a stormtrooper. Yeah, that's a belt clip. Don't lose the belt clip. Oh, they look tight. Do these even fit your hands? <laughs> kind of bummed these fit. Oh, those look so pinchy. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> so you leave those on. We're going to keep unboxing. Ooh. It's um <laughs> some Star Wars body wash. <laughs> that's um, a good thing to send to Star Wars nerds, is some soap to clean their bodies. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. Which one do you think will have the nicest scent? You gotta Probably pick one. Probably BB-8. Okay, well, no, that one's gonna stay with me on my on this shelf over here. Um, let's see Captain Phasma. I wanna know her scent. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it smells like grape. <laughs> what do you think it smells like? I don't know, probably sweat being in this armor it all day. Smells of grape. Okay, what's here? Oh, Star Wars sandwich bags. Today, everybody, we're gonna be opening these Star Wars sandwich bags. Do I sound like a toy reviewer on YouTube? Yeah. I think I do. Ah, ah I see that this bag has uh, Chewy on it. It says Chewy. It also has the brand right there, so you can remember what brand it is. That's a good feature. Uh, looks like it has one point of articulation right there. <laughs> This is clearly the best bag. This is our BB-8 Ziploc bag. What would you what would you put in this bag? I'd probably put all of my action figures that I had foolishly opened up as a child. Kylo Ren. I feel like Kylo Ren would be very good at preserving food. Why? You don't feel that way? No, I mean, the dark side corrupts, if Didn't anything. Didn't you see that scene where he was making marmalade? When he was talking to the Darth Vader helmet, he was jarring some marmalade. That was one of the deleted scenes, I think. All right, it looks like we have one more item in the box. And I think this might be the clear winner here. I actually want this. We have <laughs> a Darth Maul inflatable chair. 
Um, who hasn't wanted to sit in Darth Maul's lap? Look how jazzed that Just guy is to be there. sitting there. He feels as excited as I feel <laughs> on the inside right now. Oh my god. <laughs> it has his name printed Just on it. So you don't forget. In case you're looking at the chair and you're like, I can't tell what character that is. Oh, it's huge. Hope you have some good lung capacity. It's going really, really well. All right, everyone's tired of blowing into this giant Darth Maul, so we're just gonna put it on top of the other chair. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so comfortable. He really wants you to. <laughs> His clenched Darth Maul fists. Is such a oh my god! <laughs> He's just over my shoulder. <laughs> Look at his eyes. I like that you can just see his eyes over the top of my head. All right. <laughs> Weird prom picture. Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, it's like those awkward family photos. Okay, so now that we have all these goodies, um, that's the whole episode. So you may okay. leave now. Okay. Um, take your Chewbacca Ziploc party favor. Oh, thank you. There you go. That's a gift from me to you. All right. Um, and that's your only payment for being on the episode. Okay. You signed a contract. I don't remember. Contra that, you just agreed to it when you took it in your hand. Okay. It's too late now. Um, so, there yes, please get out of my house. Okay. Go. All right. Uh, you can't actually leave because you'll mess up the cable. So, just yeah. crouch behind that chair and we'll pretend that you're it's gone. Too. It's okay. time for me to do general grievances. I'm going to look at our comment section and see what you guys had to say. Okay, let's see what our comment section said on last week's episode. Our first comment is from Sander Cohen, who said, Jenny should jump out of her seat and fight one of her guests one day. Picture it, it'd make the news and everything. They have a point. Are you still back there? Yeah. Get out here, I wanna fight you. Are you serious? No, I don't wanna stand up. Me neither. Okay. Next comment is from Gary Hum. Gary says, when are we going to see Jenny in a sexy outfit? Um, all of my outfits are sexy outfits. What are you trying to say about my fashion, Gary? What are your sexy outfits like? That's what I thought. Not sexy is what I'm implying. I doubt he knows how to dress. That's what I'm saying. Okay, next comment is from Joe Nesvik, who said, a couple of episodes ago, Jenny said Revenge of the Sith was her favorite and seemed annoyed of those who think The Empire Strikes Back is the best. Now she says the prequels are bad. Interesting. Well, um, if you were a true fan, you would know that Revenge of the Sith is my favorite movie in Jenny Legends. And in the new canon, I don't like the prequels. Um, obviously, it was retconned when they rebooted the Jenny series for the new Star Wars films. So um, maybe check Jennypedia next time so you can be in the know. Okay, so that's it for our comments. And uh, I guess that's, that's everything. That's it. So I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, unless you didn't. And then you wouldn't have even heard me say that. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Can I go home now? Goodbye. I'm doing the outro. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>